What's up everybody? This is Andrew with Uni Programmer and welcome to the sixth Java tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use the math operators as well as the other stuff, variables, concatenating strings, or we're going to be creating a program. So the other day I was in class, history class, and I was noticing that there's a bunch of people in these seats because it was kind of like theater seating. And I was sitting up in the front row on the right side and I realized that this classroom is huge and there's a bunch of rows and all the seats are full and there was just a lot of people so while I should have been paying attention to class I had my laptop out and I was like you know what I'm gonna figure out how many people are in this classroom so what I did is I looked up the algebra to figure out um, there's like a sum of terms and there's also how to find like an nth term and I will bring that to the screen right now just so you can see the formula that I'm talking about all right so if you look at the screen here you will see that um, find the value of the nth term and the nth term would be like um, if there's you want to find the value of the ninth row or tenth row and you know um, the other variables you can find a certain value and then sum of arithmetic series is so that would be like finding the total amount within that so you'll it'll make sense but it's like if, if you're trying to find the amount of people in a coliseum or the amount of seats in a in a movie theater this is what you would use because obviously I don't want to count up to like 500 or 50,000 so but I'm going to show you how to write it in code now because this is what I figured out while I was in class. So, so let's go ahead and start out. Now we know we're going to use the like basic variables. We have an integer here, and we're going to call this first row. And while I was looking at the first row, I counted how many people were seated in the first row, and there was ten. And we'll we'll just add a comment. So this will be amount of people in the first row. You don't have to comment this out. However, if you're going to be writing code, I highly suggest that you comment things out because it helps when you're looking back. And this goes, I'm putting it with the variable. And I will explain how these correspond with the variables as we go. So there were 10 people in the first row. Now, in order to figure out the value of the nth term, it's which term? So that would be like, um, like say there's 10 rows. So to find out the value of the 10th row, it's gonna be the value of how many is in the first plus the amount of rows minus one times the difference. So now you know. All right, so that's what we're gonna work on first. But first we need to get our variable set. So we're going to have another integer, and this one is going to be the difference. And the difference is the change of the change per row. So the difference in this circumstance there was two, because in the first row there was ten people, and in the second row there was twelve people. So that's how you find the difference. So it'd be the change per row, and also known as the D. So Now our next one is going to be int row, or let's call this the number of rows. Num rows. And that'll be there was the amount of total rows from first to last was eight in my situation. And we'll just note this out. Total amount of rows. And that would be in our equation. That's going to be in. And you'll see how it all plugs in. Next, we need another one, and it's going to be the last row. Now, I'm sitting in the front row. I'm looking back, and obviously, I can't count how many people are in the last row. It was a lot. But I can't just sit there and be like, one, two, three, you know, there's a lot going on in the classroom, so. But this is what we can figure out, because I know how many is in the first row, I know the difference, and I know how many total rows there is. So, 
there are. So let's go ahead and comment that out. So this would be the total amount of people, and that's what we're looking for. Total amount of people. Hold on. Yeah, in the last row. And this would be a n. So that would be up here. So we already have what we need for this. So that's good. And then uh, obviously we're, lo we're looking for the total amount of people in the room. So all the seats are full. So we want to find out how many people are in the room completely. So it'll be, so we'll call this one total of people. This will be an integer variable. But we're not going to set it to any value because that's what we need to find. We need to find how many is in the last row. And then we also need to find the total people. So um, I'll just comp this out. Total amount of people in the room. And this is going to be SN. So when you look for the formula, that's going to be right there. SN. All right. Now that we have our variables down, we have our equation. Let's go ahead and plug our variables into the equation. So we're going to go ahead and find the value of the nth term. So what we want to do is find out basically what how many people are, are in the last row, right? So we're not going to use this. We're going to use our variables and plug them into that equation. So we have last row equals first row plus, and just write this down as is and then I'll explain it. In here we're going to have num rows minus one, and then we're going to multi multiply that by the difference. All right, so right here, all we did was copy this right here. This we use this equation. So a n, which is the last row or the last term, like it's like when you're looking for a specific term. So equals first row plus number of rows minus one, and you're gonna multiply that by the difference or the change. And we can output that to the screen using system.out.println. So let's put, remember in parentheses, amount of people in the last row. Put a colon space. We want this space so it looks good. Plus we're gonna concatenate it with our variable. And last row, because remember right here, we declared this variable, but we didn't set it to any value. This is where we set it to the value. And then right down here, we're gonna output it. So let's go ahead and output that to the screen. So uh, go up here to run. And then right here, it's gonna be amount of people in last row. So. In, in this circumstance, there was 24 people in the last row. Oops. All right, so we have that. Now, through math, some calculations, we're gonna figure out how many people are in the last row. Now let's figure out how many people are in the entire room, right? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the other equation, which is the sum of the arithmetic series arithmetic series so or I guess arithmetic series but so it's a sum of the terms equals this term times the first term or first amount plus the amount of terms oh here let me uh, go ahead and rephrase that this is gonna be the number of terms this is gonna be how many is in the first term or row and then this is gonna be how many is in the last term or row, and then you're gonna divide that by two. And, and that will totally give you the sum of all terms. Hope that makes sense. So 
we're going to use the variable that we have here, which is total people that we created, we declared, but we didn't set a value to. And we're going to set a value to it right now. So it's going to be total people or purple, either way, equals uh, da -da -da -da. total people equals, and we're going to set it to num rows because that is the number of rows up here and then in parentheses excuse me we're going to multiply it by what's in the parentheses and then we're going to have a1 so we're going to that's going to be our first row plus our an which is our last row the amount that's in the last row And then after that's done, we are going to divide that by two. So what this line will do is take the variable that's total people and it's gonna set it to the value that's on whatever on the right hand side here. So this is gonna be number of rows, total number of rows. It's gonna multiply that by what's in the parentheses here. So it's gonna be that, that amount that's in the first row plus that amount that's in the last row. And then after that, it's gonna divide it by two. All right, so let's output that to the screen. And so we will put our string. That way we know what we're saying on here. It's just, just not just a number outputted to the screen. It's gonna have, you know, it's gonna have a string explaining what it is. So total people seated, and then we will, we will bring in our variable. All right. That should be just like that. Now, to figure out how many people are in the classroom, we just go like that. So, we have total people seated was 136. So while I was in class, supposed to learn about some awesome history, I learned, or I went over how to do this code, and it was kind of fun, you know. So, I hope this helped. I'll go over it one more time for you. So these are the two equations that I used. One is to find the value of the nth term and then the other one is the sum of a series of terms. So I use this one to find out how many people were in the last row, and then I use this to calculate all the rows combined. Now in Java, I, had an, I declared all integers. I had first row, which was equal to 10, and then I had difference, which was two, which was the change per row. I had the number of rows, which is the total amount of rows, which was eight. And then the last row, which I did not know how many people there were, but I knew I could find out. And then the total amount of people in the room, I did not know, but I could figure it out. All right, so we had the last row, which was this one. We set that to, um, we used the equation right there, and set it to the first row plus, and then in parentheses we had, so that'd be eight minus one, and then multiplied it by the difference. We output it to the screen, how many were in the last row, and then we took our total people variable and set that to the value of using the equation with these variables, and it turned out that it was 136. All right, so I hope this video helped. Um, a quick, easy, um, real-world program using what we've learned with the math operators and um, using different variables and concatenating putting out strings and now you see that you can even use equations like in math and it just carries over almost identically in Java. So I hope this helped. This is Andrew Jones with Uni Programmer. Go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you in the next tutorial.